The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour. And uh, as always, it doesn't matter where you're at, as long as you're here at the appointed time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So we've got a market uh, when we came back from the... Three-day weekend last Tuesday, I said, uh, beware of a sideways market. Uh, that mo uh, morning, the uh, S&P opened at 41.52. I think that's what it was, 41.50, something like that. We're at 41.40 here a week, almost a week later. I don't think that there's much going to change out here. Um, the market is in uh, why I have a lot of people screaming at me in emails on a daily basis telling me how the market's going lower uh, since they started that campaign it hasn't it's done nothing but go sideways and frustrate them i uh, generally uh, see the market do something after they give up and quit uh, emailing me with their uh, ransom like notes uh, that eh, some of them are actually getting a little psychotic and uh, that tells me a great deal about what the market's doing to the uh, less uh, strong in character for the market that uh, they can go so wrapped up on. As I said uh, to one of those today, uh, there is no bull market. There is no bear market. Uh, there's just the right side. And, you know, I guess Jesse said a little bit better. There's no bear side or bull side, just the right side. And, you know, eventually, maybe they'll be right. But uh, I don't know. It just smacks of uh, the guy out there on the uh, strip uh, down there on Times Square saying the end is nigh or the uh, folks from the uh, uh, that had the Mayan calendar uh, that everything was supposed to uh, end, what, in like 2005 or something. And then... Uh, you know what? Uh, it didn't end, and uh, they gave us another five years, and it didn't end. And uh, they probably gave us another five years, but everybody kind of uh, gave up listening to them. I don't have any kind of wise and great prediction other than we are in a sideways market, and it will continue to do that until uh, it breaks out. Uh, generally, in sideways markets, you look for the market uh, to fade whichever way the market does break out. After a week or something like this, it can be, there'll be a lot of things going on. But uh, the whole ability to say the market's going higher and lower, there is a third choice, and that is sideways. And uh, pretty much what we've had. Uh, if you would have uh, gotten my newsletter, as you uh, should have this morning, you would have found out that the uh, options were pointing to resistance at 417 on the spies, they got to what four? What did they get to? Four sixteen and almost there. What was it? Uh, four sixteen sixty. Didn't quite make fourteen uh, 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 four seventeen, but uh, options uh, predictions continue to uh, get narrower and narrower, and that means a uh, more quiet market. Um, I think a lot of people believe that they should uh, come to the market and make uh, wages like they're working on an hourly basis. Uh, the market is not like that. A lot of times the market will give you nothing or it will take money from you. Uh, waiting for that big fat pitch is what I do. So I don't spend a lot of time uh, wringing my hands about a market that won't give you anything. I think a, a great deal of uh, uh, like uh, fishermen. Uh, you know, if uh, you got a hurricane going on out there, there's nothing you can do about it. You can uh, yell and scream and, uh, uh, and uh, tussle your hair. I don't understand the whole thing of not understanding that the market isn't a machine that spits out money on a daily basis. Uh, 
as uh, Warren Buffett says, it is a mechanism for uh, giving money from the uh, from the inpatient to the patient. And uh, sometimes the best thing you can do is sit on your hands. So I haven't been uh, pushing either long or short positions. Uh, when I do, uh, the risk reward will be there. Doesn't mean I'll be right, but I'll have better risk reward than we have now. Uh, and I'm unsure what that uh, thing will be that will break us out of this area. But uh, I'm sure that there will be something to come along. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I haven't listened for a while. Uh, but uh, it's interesting. Uh, okay. Uh, 877-927-6648. Uh, we do have some questions, and uh, eh, you can have uh, any question you want today because there will be probably a little extra time in this show. There's a few things that are interesting to me today, but for the most part, uh, probably the most interesting is uh, that we're in a sideways market, and we haven't really had one uh, in a while. Uh, okay. And see what else do we have. <laughs> I found some patience, huh? Uh, you never know. 877-927-6648. Uh, As I said, sideways is a direction. That's probably all I really have to say about that. And we'll move on to a little history. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1944... 18,000 British and American parachuters are already on the ground at this time. An additional 13,000 aircraft were mobilized to provide air cover and support for the invasion. And at 6 a, uh, uh, 6.30 a.m., American troops uh, came ashore at Utah and Omaha Beach. Of course, uh, two years later, my father would become the first uh, officer in the... Uh, United States Air Force. That was when the split came from the Army Air Force uh, to the uh, Air Force, a separate thing. I don't know what date that was. Uh, just remember that uh, they did it. Uh, they did the uh, officers uh, uh, brought them in uh, one year uh, A to Z, and the next one Z to A, and he was uh, with a W, uh, the first of the last. And uh, was the first sworn in as a Air Force officer, which I always thought was interesting. But uh, other than that, uh, eh, not a lot of stuff to talk about today. Uh, but uh, I have a lot of questions already coming in. Path at TFNN.com. Had some interesting questions already in the bin. We've got three or four. Add yours to the heap. But uh, that's it. I'm not going to get too excited. Uh, you know what? You just can, you, you got to learn to be still, I think, or give a lot of money back to the market. That's it. Back. inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve and a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, dearest partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. And as we return, We've got lots of emails. Uh, be like uh, the rest of the gang, the cool kids, and email me at path at tfnn.com. Or be extra cool and call me at 877-927-6648. Okay, so question about uh, XOM uh, from Hector. <laughs> uh, and uh, what do I think? Um, it's kind of weak up here. Uh, it was kind of weak up on Friday. I think <clears throat> we're probably hanging out at some fairly decent highs uh, that will need to consolidate. But, you know, unless we see a, a change in probably both the Senate and the House, uh, we're not going to see much of a change uh, in the policies uh, that have created uh, extremely high uh, crude prices. And I know some people will not agree with me. And uh, they have the right to be wrong. But uh, why it is a uh, global commodity, uh, there is a huge amount that has been cut off. Uh, we're always needing to add additional supply. And, uh, you know, if, uh, uh, if we wanted to drop the price by, let's say, $2, well, let's call it a buck, a gallon. Right now, we could do it tomorrow by allowing... Uh, the Canadians to export almost two million extra barrels a day, uh, but uh, they call and they get the uh, busy signal. So we are doing, you know, you may believe that that policy is correct, and uh, you can debate that after four o'clock each day. But uh, all we're talking about is higher or lower, and if you are uh, committed to making less supply. Uh, the price will go higher. And right now, I think you have to be delusional to not believe that that's exactly what's going on. Now, we know why everybody thinks that they want to do that. Um, but it kind of makes me think of that song was a Kenny Chestnut. Uh, everybody wants to go to heaven, just not now. Everybody wants uh, less global warming. Uh, they just don't want to pay for it. And I think we'll probably see some changes 
above that in the future, eventually you just can't take the kind of political pressure that will come to bear. But I don't see anything that changes that. Uh, last week, of course, we had uh, a deal for all of about five minutes uh, with the Saudis for additional production. Um, kind of sad to think that we have to, uh, what, uh, depend on the kindness of strangers and even worse, uh, third world despots, um, when we could uh, basically do domestic production uh, and greatly alleviate a lot of the, what is a confiscatory tax, especially on the lower income folks in the United States, but I guess not everybody sees it the way I do. But anyway, as far as I'm concerned, uh, if you've got something like Exxon, which are producing oil wells, you're on the next thing to have a monopoly. I don't know why you would want to get rid of it, but that's uh, something that. Uh, <laughs> uh, dedicated and committed. Yep, there is that. Um, so I don't see if you've got I, I'm not big on the oil uh, uh, going uh, the uh, uh, those uh, that don't have production and those that are uh, out there trying to drill or create any kind of new. Uh, we're making monopolies out of anybody that actually has uh, production today and production in the near future. So it is kind of a, a tale of two cities. Uh, 877 On a similar note, uh, can, Martin wants to know, can you comment uh, what you think uh, the stock market would happen in uh, short term, two or three weeks, and longer, six months, uh, if the price of oil and uh, if uh, Ukraine and Russia conflict came to some kind of peace agreement? Um, for us, it, the big problem is that all these big... Uh, uh, oil companies, especially most of them in the U.S. or England, have pulled out. I don't know if they would come back in or how long it would take them to get back uh, to helping Russia. So Russia is probably going to be down for probably, f I'm going to say, five years. Uh, even if they made a deal today, I don't think we're coming back in there and fixing uh, their oil wells because they're just going to use it to create more cash to start more wars somewhere else. At least that's where I think everybody's head's going to be. So I think it's kind of problematic. We need, uh, I, so I, I'm not thinking that that changes it as much as you want. I think the big thing in the long term would be uh, drilling everywhere possible and finding every kind of technology to bring oil to market. Uh, and we in the United States kind of let it for a while. Uh, we're now actively discouraging any of that. So, again, um, two to three weeks, everybody probably looks at it being better. Long term, uh, we need, unless you have both the House and the Senate go to some kind of supermajority, I don't think that there is a change in the uh, trajectory of uh, oil prices in the U.S. at least. Uh, also, can you comment on a major semiconductor foundry to be operating and functional in the U.S.? Uh, there's nothing that's going to be the size of uh, Taiwan anytime soon. Uh, we basically, the EPA, chased all the uh, uh, many of the manufacturers out of the United States. And other than Intel, who has some special... Uh, uh, dispensation for making a lot of the products that uh, we use in the military, uh, they wouldn't be here either. There is one smaller foundry up in, I want to say, uh, in maybe Michigan or Wisconsin. I can't remember which one it is. I wrote about it in the Tech Insider a while ago. Um, they're starting to do more stuff, especially over the last, oh, I'm going to say two years. Uh, as the chip shortage kind of came on, they are working on making the most important chips uh, for the U.S. military, but that's about it. Um, there's been more discussions. I know the Taiwanese shipped, um, and when I'm talking Taiwanese, I'm talking Taiwan Semiconductor, shipped a bunch of um, um, 
containers uh, from uh, enough for a, a full foundry. I have not heard a word, nor uh, has anybody said anything what happened to all those containers, where they're at, and what they're doing. My understanding was they were going to somewhere in Arizona, uh, out in the desert. And uh, I don't know if there's some special dispensation for them getting started over here, but uh, that's about it. Right now, no one's really talking about building something new when you can't even get uh, silicon wafers uh, for the most part, which is uh, limited. So uh, it's hard to get real optimistic about that anytime soon. Again, it's a uh, it's policy. We'll be back in a If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Tom O'Brien has just announced a live Timing the Trade webinar Friday, June 10th from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Join Tom O'Brien for five hours of live education as he teaches you his trading methodology right from his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. In this live webinar, Tom O'Brien will be teaching you his entire trading system, including quality volume, ABC structures, Fibonacci confluence zones, cause and effect, swing points, and more. We will be limiting this class to 40 attendees, so please do not delay and reserve your seat today for this special live event with Tom O'Brien. All attendees will also receive a physical copy of his book, The Art of Timing the Trade, an $88 value, mailed to you, along with a free month of his daily newsletter, Market Insights, a $169 value. For all the details and to reserve your seat today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. As we're back, uh, another uh, question about ERF. Uh, which is inner plus uh, there are again development of crude oil and natural gas in the United States and Canada uh, they've been kind of drifting up here kind of looks like it's probably close uh, to making uh, the end of another ABC higher uh, doesn't have a lot of short positions in it so I don't know what you want to say there uh, again like I said probably the easiest solution for us to drop its Oil prices is getting uh, both crude and natural gas uh, from Canada, and that could happen very quickly. Uh, but uh, at least no appetite so right now on that. So uh, I think 
some of these folks like this company are front running the thought that eventually uh, that will be it. And uh, the uh, everybody will submit to political pressure to drop the price of crude. But uh, I'm not so sanguine. After the uh, deal blowing up last week in uh, the administration's face with the Saudis, um, and that deal's all over already, by the way, uh, we've gotten not a drop out of the SPR. So uh, it's very hard for me to be realistic and think that anything there is going to be significantly different. So I just watch it. I think maybe, like I said, I'd rather be in somebody with production uh, than somebody in exploration. But it doesn't look bad, just ending a uh, ABC, a, a rather large ABC kind of up. Okay, other things going on here. Questions about where the UVXY is going? Uh, my guess is to Splitsville. Uh, almost always this thing splits somewhere around the 1st of uh, June. I mean, the, yeah, from 1st of June to somewhere around the 1st of, uh, of uh, July. I haven't seen anything. I just uh, did a search during the break. I haven't seen much, but these things tend to go down to about 10 bucks, and then do a 5 to 1 or a 10 to 1 split versus split. So we'll have to see what it does on that. But uh, my guess is that before the market really breaks, uh, we'd have to have some kind of surprise. Uh, and I don't see much of that kind of surprise uh, happening other than you know, maybe we go down so slowly in the market, uh, this thing still goes down to the $11 figure of the April 12th. But uh, uh, it looks okay. But my guess is that we're probably in some kind of range bound uh, market, which is not good for this until maybe the 4th of July. And then we may have completed some kind of weird and bizarre uh, B to C leg before we get to see the C to D leg lower in the markets. Uh, to, to what else do we have here? More questions than answers. But anyway, oh, that was a UVXY. Another question about TLT. I was pretty surprised that the TLT didn't go up and try 121, 122. It got close, 119.74. So I was off by a buck, but I thought it would go up and probably try to wash some folks out. The good part is that you're back at the previous low and volume so far today is fairly light. 112.62 on May 9th with 33 million shares. You've got about 14.5. So you're pretty close to some support. Um, the energy was a little bit much on this big gap down on the 31st of May. But other than that, it's been fairly quiet. So uh, we'll know when you retest that May 9th low, but uh, you're into that candle today and there isn't much left. My guess is that you're probably like the rest of the market going to find this thing uh, going sideways, uh, maybe a little bounce off that 112.62 low. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, what do I think about uh, HYG? Um, I don't think it tells us that much. I think, uh, again, we've had a market that was probably too dour, probably now a little bit uh, uh, manic, and we're now trying to settle in some kind of real uh, price and price discovery in the market. But uh, kind of down on lighter volume today. Again, I think a lot of this stuff is just going to go sideways. Uh, and without, I think we're probably going to need some kind of big surprise to bust out of this range before the July the, the uh, 7th. Okay. Uh, we got that. Uh, we got that. We got that. Now, uh, on unlighter news, uh, Amazon did split today. Uh, the chart really makes it look like it wants to go to this double gap. Uh, and that double gap would be about 136, 137, 138-ish. 
back here. And that's where, if this thing is making a bigger ABC on the way down, would be the low risk reward point. Um, could it fail here right now? Um, there were a couple of bills that affected stocks uh, that uh, are going to become law in New York on Friday. I wrote about them in the Tech Insider this morning. Uh, and an update, one uh, affecting another company and one affecting Amazon. It's more about the workers and some other stuff going on in the unionization efforts uh, in New York City. But that's kind of happened across the country. And I think that's going to continue to weigh probably on Amazon. Uh, as I said a year ago, there was a reason Bezos was leaving. And that was the easy times are over and the heavy lifting starts now in Amazon uh, as a big company that will probably have to be under pressure to do things uh, more traditionally, uh, like labor relations. Uh, the one thing I thought was very interesting is how hard they fought this bill on quotas for, produ uh, for productivity at the same time saying that they had no quotas. So thus protest too much, I think, for Amazon. But uh, I think still you could drift up to 138. That would be, if you're thinking bearish, the part where this would be a fairly decent good risk reward uh, whoop, to the downside. 877-927-6648. Uh, okay. And the market is kind of thin and wispy here. Um. Okay, we got another one. Greg wants to know where I think the trading range is. I think it's uh, 4,090 uh, to 41, probably 65, 67, something in that neighborhood. It's better on the spies because I see the options in them. But yeah, there's, I think any kind of sold, uh, pop gets sold and shorted and all the dips get bought and that's kind of until we f fight it out with a real uh, bear bull uh, grudge cage match grudge cage grudge cage match it's not going to be over but uh, these things do go on the uh, thing to do is not get too hyped up one way or the other let the market tell you way it's going to go. Right now, I don't back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors.
are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. question from uh, Robert about uh, streaming, anything going on here. Uh, Netflix is a uh, big cheese, at least uh, over the last week. It's, uh, I don't know what, ser uh, what uh, season they're on, but Ozarks is the big winner on, t on uh, streaming services these days. Um, volume is rather poor for Everything else, from what I could see, uh, a lot of the big ticket stuff that a lot of people thought would be uh, the key to getting uh, eyeballs uh, on the streaming services uh, like uh, Obi-Wan and the others are not attracting a lot of viewers. Um, I haven't watched Ozarks. Maybe somebody in the den has uh, seen it or something. Um, I didn't know why I just didn't get into it, but. And I don't have Netflix. I might, you know, if I get it, maybe I'd watch it. But uh, I don't know. Yeah, apparently it is the, uh, it's become uh, the same kind of thing as, uh, as the Sopranos was. Everybody really, really loves it. Maybe it's that good or maybe everything else is just that bad. But uh, apparently everybody is really getting into it. Um I watched the last uh, episode of uh, of uh, Obi Wan, and uh, I don't know what they're thinking. Um, I have to say that I think that all they did was uh, take the same script from the Last Jedi and decide to turn it into ten episodes. Uh, the last, I'm going to say, last fourth of it, last third of it, I laughed through. It was so ridiculous. Um, so I'm not a big fan of uh, what Disney's doing to that. Uh, on the opposite side, uh, The Mandalorian's probably the only reason to have Disney, at least for me. Uh, that is, uh, I'm going to say, ten times better uh, than uh, Obi-Wan. Uh, just, uh, I don't understand the whole thought of, uh, of uh, making something worse and paying four dollars a billion dollars to buy it and then just uh, continually make a poor product but uh, nothing's good has happened uh, for uh, Star Wars since Disney bought it and uh, yeah this weekend's episode uh, I'm gonna say dumpster fire comes to mind uh, eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight anyway uh, on Netflix um, all of these companies are starting to get discounted. There's still over 600 series in production. I don't know. You're going to have to have some of these companies go bankrupt. Um, and I'm not exactly sure what's happening on that front. But, uh, you know, it, at least it's not going down. I think that's the best thing you can say about Netflix at the moment. Um and it may take another year for these streaming services to turn, turn around. I think a great deal of them, uh, Netflix in the news, actually saying that they're killing some of the uh, series that no one watched 
or uh, things that probably no one was going to watch. Um, and that is probably a good thing long term for Netflix. I'm just wondering how long that takes to suffer uh, to uh, filter down into uh, the uh, the uh, earnings report. But uh, they're cutting production by about a fourth. And like I said, there's 600 shows. You couldn't even watch them all if you did it 24 hours a day. So it's very tough to see how that's going to, yeah, how that's going to do. The last thing I really liked on Netflix uh, was uh, Cocaine Cowboys. I think it's still on there. Uh, like I said, I don't have it anymore, but that was probably the best thing I'd seen on Netflix in a long time. And that's uh, the Miami version of Cocaine Cowboys. I remember being, I think about 1986 and being down uh, in Miami watching the powerboat races. And I had no idea that, you know, 30 years later, I'd be watching a uh, documentary about the uh, biggest cocaine smugglers in the world. And those are the people I was watching. But uh, very interesting. Uh, I, I thought that was much better than any of the other stuff, uh, serialized stuff I'd seen in a long time. Still like it. 877-927-6648. Uh, um, Bosch is really good. I'm not, I don't know about the Bosch legacy. Uh, you could really see a lot of these times, um, you can see when they change um, series that it's successful, but they want to cut the price of production down and make a few more series uh, out of it, a couple more uh, seasons out of it. And Bosch Legacy, you can see where they were really cutting prices. And, I mean, it's pretty obvious. You look, um, he had to go to some other place instead of the house that he had before. Uh, they bought it for a day and ran two uh, two things out of it. It got rid of a lot of the other people that were part of the ensemble cast. Um, and that's always the hard part of it. Special effects are poor on it. The story, still pretty good, uh, but they're still trying to cut costs on it, and that's always problematic. Uh, yeah, it was uh, – Bosch Legacy is not – I like most of it. And maybe I liked it because I read all the books, so I know parts of the stories in there. But uh, they, you could really see that they drop prices. I mean, they drop the the uh, money and the production value on it. So, well, I probably still watch it, yeah. But uh, now the first seven seasons are great. Okay, what else do we have out here? Oh, let's take a quick look at Disney. I don't think anything's moving that much today. And yeah, down just a little. No volume. Again, I don't think there's a lot going on in these. Uh, question about Microsoft. MSFT. It had a nice bounce this morning. Um, wasn't surprised that it didn't stick. It kind of went up and made a nice high. You had a nice wide-ranging day last Thursday. Friday, a doji day. Um, and today, just kind of uh, trying to get a engulfing here on that doji, but not much, but yeah, I think it could get uh, 265 ish again, maybe uh, 260, and maybe it's getting ready to make a little bit of ABC up, but uh, there isn't a lot of juice out there in that. Uh, other questions coming out uh, GDXJ. Take a quick look. GDXJ. Uh, Okay. Um, you've kind of come up uh, against uh, a weakening background uh, background of uh, lower prices on gold. Uh, people still want to be in it. And to me, the big money on this is uh, not these slow moves up and down. But uh, crude, will, crude and energy will top out at some point. And when that does, I think it's time to go in deep and on gold. Uh, everybody's kind of in that at the moment as a safe haven. Uh, when that starts pulling back, uh, I think uh, gold is really going to have ready, uh, get ready for its next ABC up. I do not know what that is. We'll be back in a minute. 
Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And the last question of the day comes in from Randy. And that is the May 26th high with 8.7 million shares in UNG. Uh, we got about 6.2. So you could get to the same thing. Um, I still suspect that you're going to find some kind of low back here at 27-ish, maybe just a little underneath it. And that'll be the next really good time to buy. Um, I mean, it was a nice pop here, but I'd probably be in the summertime, be thinking about selling it uh, out here. Uh, anything else that we're looking at here? Volume. Uh, what do I make at the volume? Uh, volume drastically decreased on Friday. Uh, we're probably doing a little bit more than that now. We're doing about seven and a half billion shares. Uh, we came in with just under 10 billion shares for Friday. So is there a little more juice here today? Yeah, but it's not a whole lot. And I'm not seeing a lot of other stuff going on here that makes me think uh, that we're either going much higher are breaking uh, to much lower prices. A whole lot of nothing. And uh, both the up move and the down moves, uh, when they've come quickly today, have been on light volume. So I don't see a lot of edge one way or the other. Um, just kind of uh, listless, windless trading. And again, as I said earlier, it's all about what Warren Buffett said. The uh, patient 
money flows from the patient or from the inpatient to the patient. And uh, I think we just need a lot of patience uh, as we go through the next maybe day, maybe it's a maybe it's a couple of weeks. Uh, but uh, if you're thinking short and the market's going to crack, the more I look at it, the more the, the way that these uh, markets are firming up. I think maybe you have the C, the B to C uh, come in maybe July the 4th. So uh, just uh, make sure and don't get too ahead of yourself. So when you can, not when you have to, we will return tomorrow. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most.